Welcome back to more advanced rollerball uh, ideas. We're going to do some uh, things here. The main things we're going to do is disable the collider. We're going to dynamically count boxes, and then when we get the last box, we will load a new level using the scene manager. And we're also going to look at the uh, build settings, which is necessary to do all that. So first thing I added over here, this is in the player controller. I just said if count is greater than or equal to 10, I'm going to do application.quit. Count is public. So when we go back in here, it's on player. Here's that player controller script, and you can see count right there at the bottom. So let's play. <clears throat> count, you're also going to see on the upper left corner of the screen because we set that up to update. I'm going to go very slowly. You're going to notice something bad happened. I just got six. What's actually going on is a little tricky to see. So what I'm going to do is cause it to happen. But wrong window. We are moving towards that pickup right there. I did click on the model because that's where the box collider is, and you're going to see that uh, this growing and shrinking actually is ca causing the collision. So I'm going to go very slowly. So everything is fine. Actually, I do want to go. Well, we can see the count in the upper left corner here. So I'm about to collide. Uh, I don't know about that. So, anyways, uh, count seven. Now, if you look, it's shrinking. Shrinking. I might be going too quickly here. Oh, I think we're going to get it right here. So I'm actually not colliding anymore. There's still a box here, but the ball is no longer overlapping the box. So I'm expecting to get one more collision as this uh, box grows back. Yep, so we got count eight. So that's bad. We should not be getting... Uh, I've hit realistically two boxes and I have eight for my count. Uh, so I can keep passing through. Uh, now I have nine. So what we really need to do is turn off the box collider. Uh, but I don't want to do it. I want to do it automatically when I hit the actual pickup. Uh, the other thing, uh, I've set application quit to happen when count hits 10. But as you can see in the editor, it's not quitting. That's a very easy line of code down in set count text. I just put a if statement right here, if count greater than or equal to 10, application not quit. This very well could be outside the uh, check up here, but it's a little bit more efficient if I push it inside because it won't be running this check uh, all the time. It'll only do it if it's greater than or equal to 2. Uh, hmm. That should be 10. I do want to change it to dynamic total count. This won't make sense right now, but it should make sense soon as to where I'm going with this. This is completely redundant right now. I'll put a different condition in here later. All right, but the application is not quitting. Uh, that's because the editor can't close itself. And if I go build and run, it'll take a couple seconds. My machine's not that fast. Failed. I'm going to go to build settings. Um, I don't have other scenes, so I'm only going to have scene one in my build settings. You may not have any here, and that's fine if you don't. There's two ways to get them there. You can click add open scenes, uh, or if you want to add a scene that's not open, you drag like I just did right there, and they don't let you drag duplicates. It, it just won't add the other one. So I'm going to try to rebuild here. Hopefully, this will work. I may have messed up. But, nope, looks like we're alright. So I'm just going to grab 10 pickups. I'm going to cheat a little bit and grab a bunch off the first. We got four, eight. There we go. Hit quit. Now I didn't do any pausing. I just, boom, quit the application as soon as I touched the 10th. Probably want. Something a little different than that to quit the application, uh, but that was just one example of what you can do. 
So the first thing we're going to do is disable that annoying collider problem so I don't uh, get more than one pickup. So recall in our on trigger enter, this is based on our collision detection, we said if the uh, other pickup is not null, we were going to call this hit method. It is important to put the code uh, to disable the collider in the right spot. I could technically put it below here, but really it belongs with the hit action. So it should go right here. So before I engage the animation and start changing size, what I want to do is disable that collider. So a good way to do that, we're going to get component. Now I know there's a box collider, which you can absolutely grab, but I'm going to grab the collider itself, which is the parent class or super class of the box collider. All I'm going to do is disable it, and every collider can be disabled. If I wanted to change the dimensions of it, that's where the type of collider is more important. And so we're going to, and you can see this pretty easily if I run over to just do Unity Collider, should it get to the API. You can see here the base class of all colliders. Going to inherit it now. We're going to just enable. I want to destroy. Enable. There we go. So all we're going to do is basically disable it so it won't collide, and then that will be problem solved. You can look at the box collider. It inherits everything you just saw on the last page, and this will let you do other things that are specific to box colliders. But I don't really need any specific box collider. Uh, property, so I'm just going to use a regular collider. This is important because if later I change these to capsules or spheres, collider would still be, uh, that code would still be completely valid. I'm basically writing as general as I can. Now this is going to give me a collider. An easy way to see that Maybe it's not so easy. All right, well, apparently they're not showing me the uh, pop-up help that I was looking for. So we're gonna call this collider, collider. Uh, I generally just lowercase the, unless I'm gonna have multiple colliders here, I'm just gonna lowercase the name of the class that this object belongs to. And all we do, I like to just see what uh, methods are available right here. So I just did collider dot. I can go top to bottom. Now let's say I can't find it on here. Obviously, it's at the top right there. I just start typing it. Enable comes up. And this is super useful. This little tooltip right here, it tells me it's a Boolean. And I can get or set it. So I'm going to set the false. Make sure you save this. Apparently I was messing around over here. Save them all. So now when I hit, it should turn off the collider. And we'll aim at this better pickup right there. I think that's the upper left one. It's not quite. I want to really get look at the box collider. I'm going to slowly, it should be the very first frame that we hit, the box collider is going to get turned off. I can hit. Oh boy. So there we go. There's no collider attached. All right, what the world's going on? Here's the pickup script. I don't see a collider right here as a component. The collider is actually in a child. It's the only child, but it's in a child down here. So I have to get component. There's a get component in children. Oh, here's the nice pop-up that I was looking for. Uh, move my mouse. But it says, you see where it says collider base component dot get component? That initial collider is the return type. That's why I had collider over here. So there's another method.
All right, this looks through all the children and gets the first collider it sees. Now, if you have multiple colliders, this is probably not a good one to do. If you put an S on it, it returns an array. And of course, the changes I would make are these. Of course, that messes up the code below. I only have one collider, so I don't need to get all the components that are colliders. I only need to get one collider. All right, hopefully this will work. I think I'm going to hit error messages, get out of my life, make the view similar. But that's really the easiest one to hit. So there's the collide, the box collider I'm looking at on the left. And when I hit play, just approach it slowly. We should see that check mark disappear right as soon as I touch this collider. Boom, right there. And I went very slowly over it and didn't have any weird uh, duplicate counts. I don't really like the frame rate these are going at. I don't know if it's because I'm streaming and I'm recording and it's causing it to go slow. That's a very easy thing to fix. I'm going to select the prefab. Here's my better pickup. Frame count, I'm going to drop to four. That drops all the frame counts to four. Let's see if that makes things go a little faster. It's been a little while since I looked at that code. All right, that looks good. So it's a little jagged, but well, good enough. All right, my cat just ripped out my headset. And all right, so we disabled the collider. We're going to get a total count now. That will be accurate. It won't always be 10. Uh, I may, for example, have 9. So if I hit play, I'm going to run around and pick them all up. But I won't be able to hit 10, basically, now. And that's a serious problem. Easy problem to solve. So what I'm going to do is if I counted, if I had a counter in pickup, I'd probably do a static method for that so it could count all the pickups, not just one particular pickup. But where I'm going to instead count is where we're already counting, which is over in player controller. Now, this is a larger game. I would be uh, having a second script that counted all these things up. Uh, but this is a pretty small game, so we'll just put that logic right here, keep that logic where it's at. So here's where we add one to count, and then we set count text. That's down here. So basically, I don't always want 10 right here. Uh, I want a number that can change. So there's an easy way to do this. Game object dot find objects, objects of type. I don't, if you go with a singular find object of type, it'll find the first uh, loaded object, which just to warn you, may not be the one you're thinking of, and it may not always be the same one when you run the game different times. So I would try to avoid relying on uh, it finding the object that you're thinking of. A much better way to do it is get all the objects of that type and then sort through and find the one you're looking for. I'm going to look for objects with the pickup script because I know that the pickup script is only attached once to each pickup. So I should have the same number of pickup components as I have pickups in the game. And just like before, uh, this is a pickup. It's an array. Now, I don't call this pickup because it's lots of pickups, so I just pluralize it pickups. And now, arrays have a length and this right here, pickups.length, is a number I uh, want to use. There we go. So this will run until um, I have the right amount. I don't really need to recompute this. In, in my game, at least, I don't need to recompute this uh, every single, f every time we set the count text. 
the worst place you could put this, by the way, is in update or fixed update, because I don't need to recompute every single time. The smart place to put it is here on start. And now I need a integer to keep track of this. So we'll go up here. Yeah, total count. There's a total count, and now I just put total count down here. This down here hopefully will make sense soon when I start to change the scene. All right, so there we have total count, and this should, uh, for testing purposes, this should let me end the level on any amount of pickups. So to test this quick, I'm just gonna come through basically take out all those pickups. Let's make this game even easier. And I'll just line them up straight ahead. I know it's kind of lame, but I'm not trying to make a fun game right now. I'm trying to make a quick tutorial. I just want to click on the player so I can see the uh, count. That's the current count is zero. I picked nothing up and total count is two. Hopefully I will go Boom, count one, count two, you win. All right, good. Things are working. A little boring if we only have one level. So what I'm going to do is very quickly generate other levels. I'm not going to really care at all about how they look, that, that they're different whatsoever. The fast way to do it, I could control C, control V to copy paste. I'm selected on scene one right here. Well, it didn't work. I'm going to go control D is duplicate. That worked just fine. Just because you duplicate it, uh, the other thing you need to do is, is make it a little bit different or you won't notice that you change. So here is save scene one. So here's scene one. Here's scene two. Oh, they are different. Scene one and scene two. All right, let's make scene two look a little bit different. Delete those guys. Let's do these a tiny bit. So here. I'll save this scene. Now I'm going to duplicate scene two to get three. So here's scene three. Let's do something a little different to scene three. I'm going to modify the shape a little bit. I'm going to make this a little more narrow. Now if you look, the floor did not narrow with the walls. That's one very good reason. That's because ground is not in the same uh, is not a child of walls. Now, walls is an empty object. All it's used is basically a way to group these five objects together. Now, when I have the scale tool, it scales everything inside right there. So I just modified the shape right here pretty significantly. So the obvious, I'm on this level now. This is scene two that I'm editing. I'm reading that up there. So scene two is narrow. Scene three is wide. So I like that narrow one. Let's duplicate scene two. Gives me a fourth scene. Uh, I am intentionally letting the names go sequentially like this. You'll see why. Uh, you can do it some other way, but if they don't have a natural ordering, it's going to be tricky to uh, in your code to advance automatically from scene two to scene three, from scene three to scene four, etc. Now on scene four, I'm gonna just do a little rotation right here. Eight. Oh, not working. Now should be able to rotate. Yep, everything there. All right, and let's get a little crazy too much, you won't actually be able to reach the pickups because they will be off the, uh, too high up. There's again an easy way to fix this. You put the pickups inside here, then rotate the walls. That rotates everything you have selected. And then if you don't want the pickups there anymore, you just carefully, it's very subtle. There's a very tiny difference between dragging there and dragging there. So I pull them back out. Make sure this is playable. Barely enough force to 
man, that is tricky. I should make the collider a little bigger. All right, good enough. It doesn't have to be that easy. All right, so we got four scenes. So what we're going to do now is use the scene manager to uh, go from scene one to two to three to four. That might not be the right one. Oh, that's not the right one. All right, so scene four is unique. All right, I'm going to just jump back to scene one. So we're basically where we started, but we have four new scenes that are a tiny bit different. I say a tiny bit different, they're really exactly the same. They're just uh, one object's rotated or scaled. So we're going to go back to our uh, code and let's see, if count greater than total count. So we need to advance the level here to the next scene. So I can absolutely put you in. That's no problem. It might be good to start a code routine and then change levels uh, after maybe a second or two. I'm not going to worry about that right here. I'm just getting this over as quickly as possible. So I want to know what scene we're in right now. So what you need is scene management. So right here, using Unity Engine Management is what you need. If you don't have that, it's no problem. The IDE is quite smart. The only problem is it won't help you spell. Man, I'm so bad at spelling that I'm just going to un. You can just uh, type this in. I can't spell scene management in my life. This way, when I type scene management, it will give me all the options. All right. So, class called scene manager, not scene management, even though the import is management. So we're going to look at some of these options here. I can get active scene. That is useful to know what currently active scene uh, we're working with. It might be tempting to have some type of index variable that you uh, increase by one each time, but when you go from one scene to the next scene, you are going to lose that variable as the next scene loads. You can uh, Designate objects to not be destroyed on uh, loading a new scene, but I don't want to get into that right now. So what I'm going to do is extract the information I need from the active scene. So I'm going to get active scene. This should return a scene. Here we go. So on the left of scene manager .get active scene, I see the word scene right there. So this is going to return a scene. Or something to call it scene. Maybe active scene would be a reasonable thing to call it. So let's see what scene properties we can access. Is dirty. Uh oh. Uh, what we're going to do is name. This gives us the string name of the scene. All right. Now I'm going to substring. They all should start with the same five letters, which is scene. So I'm going to sub string. Of course, a little different than Java. You're going to go start index. And uh, oh. so that would be 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. So 5 is the index I want to start at. Uh, you could give it an end index or a, a length, but I'm just going to go to the end because uh, if it would make sense to do one right now because uh, basically here is position five in my string, but later on maybe I have 123 scenes, and so my integer part will be more than one digit. 
So that uh, leaving this out will let it get larger uh, substring all the way to the end. Uh, now one problem is this is a number. What I really want to do is turn it into an actual integer so I can increase it by one and then reconcatenate and load the next scene. So right up here we have name is scene. I'm going to hard code that in. So that's name. Uh, you have number already below. Well, this number string because it's a string right now and the way i convert it system int32.5 so this is going to give me an integer and you can read it right here i'll return an int And I'm just going to call this one number. This is the actual number, integer number that we're thinking, or at least the one that I'm thinking of. So I want to now load uh, a scene. Let's just load the scene, not even check anything. So it's in scene manager dot load. Scene. All right. There's a few ways we can do this. I could use the build index, uh, and you can absolutely do this if you want to. It's very reasonable, uh, but I'm going to avoid it because uh, it's tied to the build settings, not the scene name. What I'm going to use is the name right here. You can do. There's other ones too. I'm not going to. You can load scene, scenes additively, uh, which means don't destroy anything in the current scene. Just add in everything from the new scene and we're not going to do any of that fun stuff so i'm going to go name plus number so that should concatenate the string and the int together giving us a single string and that should load scene that should basically load the next level now there is a problem don't have an infinite number of scenes, so after scene four, there is no scene five. But we'll see that problem show up very soon. So, it doesn't matter. All right, so let's hit play and see what kind of problems we'll have. All right, we did that. Beat level one, we're into level two. Beat level two, we're into. Oh, we're in scene one right here. That's a little weird. Scene one. Scene one. Scene one. All right, so that's not cool. Build settings. Now, loading scenes requires them to be inside the build. And I want to get two, three, and four into here. Now, the order is important. The build index is listed here on the right side. But again, I'm not using the build index. So if I switched orders, this would change the way my uh, code would function. I'm going off names, so I don't really care what order this is. The only thing I really care about, though, is the first initial scene right here is the one that will start when the application is run. So that does need to be, uh, in our case, scene one. This uh, It'd be a good idea to build a scene zero. That is basically a menu, and I'm not going to cover that here, but that would be a very reasonable thing to do to build a scene zero. And then after scene four finished, you load scene zero. Hopefully, as we start crushing these levels, uh, scene one, not good. Scene one, not good. All right, why in the world is it loading scene one? I think because it's really bad syntax, but I think they'll let me get away with it. Uh, you should not put <laughs> three pluses in a row and rely on the space to disambiguate what it means. Uh, that's a way better way to write this. So another reason that would piss people off if you left your code like this, because if somebody later came in and did that, no, oh, apparently that works just fine. Nope, that doesn't work just fine. Uh, 
And what we're doing is kind of dangerous. It's probably in this case better to go uh, one plus number or number plus one. And again, if I didn't have this first, it would concatenate a one and then the number. What I want to do is add one to the numerical value, then concatenate to name. Undermine my point if I don't take those things out of the build. Alright, I can hit play and I should see an error that I was expecting a minute ago because it won't know in the world scene 2. So look, scene, quote scene 2, good, it caught the name right, but could not be loaded because it's not been added to the build settings, etc, etc. Well, we saw exactly how to do that. Now we got all of our scenes ready to go. Probably shouldn't have done that in play mode. Some changes do save in play mode, most of them don't. All right, now we can properly crush these levels. Boom. All right, we're into right here, scene two. Go to the right. Come on. Okay, a lighting majorly changed. All right, win. Uh oh. Oh, no. Come on. All right. Now we should expect an error after this. There's no scene five. All right, so we get to choose what to do. I think one good choice would be to quit. Now, of course, count really has absolutely nothing to do with whether we should quit or not. So that's pretty useless. I could... If scene manager lets us look at the possible scene. I'm going to get scene by name. I'm curious what it returns if there is no such scene. If not, an invalid scene is returned. All right. So I won't be getting a null. I'll be getting a scene back, but an invalid scene. Now name. Still right there. And this should give me a scene, I'm assuming. I didn't really read that. I don't want to call it scene because I already used that word right above, so I'll call it next scene because it's the next scene. Now I may want to load this scene. Uh, let's load it. Be sure I have that. Provider, scene manager, load. Here we go. All right, I thought I could just put scene in here. Apparently not. So it's time to use the if condition. So there we go, is valid. So what I'm going to do is if is valid load and all else. Two ways to do this. I'll go next scene dot name. All right. So if it's valid, I load it. If it's not valid, we will quit. <clears throat> hmm. 
That's not what I thought would happen. He may be invalid. using a try catch but this doesn't throw an error if you load a scene that's not there. He would not be loaded right there. I'm worried about that. I'm ability? Well, here's one where you can do a scene count in build settings. It's like the best we can do here. Uh, there'll be one problem. Which is, man. All right, so we can get the scene count, but let's go back. We got four scenes. Zero through three. Let's go scene count. This will work. So scene count should be four. If our number is our number plus one is four. I don't know why it's plus one everywhere. Put it right there. Just have number everywhere. Simplify some code. Should have lined these other levels up. Oh wow, it's working really well. Go back to output. I want to see scene.new. So we're trying to load here. Better put it there. So next scene exists. Now you need to have the console available. Uh, I'm not really concerned about rereading this warning all the time, so I'm going to get rid of that. Uh, you do usually want to have errors. Uh, shown, but what you really need to make sure this last one right here is just standard output, and you this would be off, this would be on. So no, there we go. That's the problem. You double click it, takes you right there. All right, so that was no. I just 
did that to space them out. So if you notice, my first level is super, super simple so that I can basically beat it in two seconds. What I don't want to do is spend two minutes trying to do this. All right, so we got scene two. And nothing. Which leads me to think that this is the empty string or null. All right. That seems to work. Oh, wow. Math fail. Number is generally going to be less than scene count. When it is greater than scene count, we want to quit. Wow, it's turning inequality backwards. Rookie mistake. Except one that you will keep making long after you pretend you're not a rookie. There we go. Weird. Does scene two invalid scene name? All right, so I think we'll just hard code in. Well, clever tricks not working here, so I'm just gonna go name plus number. Let's our original code. There we go. Lighting is really bad. I rotated the, away from the light. So we're on four. Hopefully we don't get the error this time. It will try to quit, but again, you don't get to actually quit inside the editor. So you're not going to see the effect of trying to quit, but what you don't see is the uh, error message where we don't have a, we're not trying to load the fifth scene, because we're trying to quit the application in our code. So that should help you uh, create some levels and how to navigate between them. I wouldn't worry so much right now about the main menu and what to do after you get to your last scene. You could uh, basically cycle number back down to one. So right here, uh, could just set number equal to one and then load the scene. So that might be a reasonable choice. And this is not the best logic. But good enough. It'll work. I don't really want to test that again. So there we go. Any comments you guys can leave down below. And hopefully you enjoyed.